What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I want to do a review video on this Comaze solar kit. This is a 200 watt polycrystalline solar kit. Full disclosure, I did get this product for free in exchange for the review, but as always I try to be as objective as possible. And right off the bat, the first thing I'm going to give a negative is the packaging. There are no corner supports in here to speak of. There's a little bit of foam but it's very thin foam and obviously this box got manhandled in transit on pretty much every corner. The top part came undone. It looks like they had to retape it. Same thing on the bottom. So the first strike against this is I don't like the packaging at all. This particular kit was only 278, 280 uh, US dollars when I was sent it. So as of right now, this exact kit that I'm going to review is no longer available on Amazon. I'll, I'll contact the manufacturer and see where else you can buy it. But just keep in mind there is an MPPT version of this that is still available. So the solar panels don't look too much worse for wear. Uh, the corners, despite the bad packaging, are only very mildly damaged. Uh, there's no damage of any kind on the panels. That I don't see too many blemishes. They seem to be fairly high quality. Despite the bad packaging, I think they survived unscathed. As you can see on the back, uh, they do have MC4 connectors, which is obviously the standard in the industry, and good thick cabling with a nice sheath. So these are not super cheap knockoff panels. These are fairly decent quality panels like I'm used to seeing. Uh, elsewhere in the kit, the rest of the kit is you got four wiring bundles. There's two bundles for connecting to a battery, and then there's the cables that connect the solar panels to the charge controller itself. Uh, over here, you have the uh, kit that will connect the MC4 connectors together of the two panels. You got two sets of Z brackets, which are just basically little tiny brackets that allow you to mount to a roof and then uh, these it's got self-tapping screws a very rudimentary instruction sheet uh, this looks like it was just printed off of a laser jet printer but that's okay that's better than some kits that I've seen I'll read through that off camera and see if it's any good and then you've got the actual controller here it does look like a pretty decent controller. You can see that there was some sort of a, a QC process. Uh, it does look like it's fairly well sealed. Okay, and then on the bottom, this is where you connect the, the wires. And so they just have uh, these little screw terminals that you put the wires in and screw them down, and that's how you connect the system. So as you can see on the front, this is a pulse width modulation controller. So uh, not the highest efficiency controller you can find, but it'll get the job done, especially for a starter kit like this. So another thing that I don't like about this kit as I'm working on the wiring is this is not copper wiring. This is aluminum wiring. And the problem with that is that it's gonna have much higher voltage drop than copper wiring is. It's gonna have a much higher resistance and not going to be as efficient as copper wire. So if you're gonna order this kit, you may want to think about ordering your own copper wiring. So the instructions are actually not bad. I read through them. They are clearly written by someone who does speak English. Uh, it's not written in Chinese and then convert, converted to or translated to English poorly. So it's actually not too bad. Um, there's a few things that they miss, but nothing super major. Um, so I would recommend that you know, beginners read this thoroughly as they're installing it and you should have no problems installing your own system. There's no reason that you need to have a professional or an electrician wire this up. One thing that I thought was a little odd is it does ask you to put a fuse in line with the positive lead before you get to the charge controller. So I don't know if that means that there's not much internal protection in this charge controller or what. I don't typically do that when I install my small off-grid systems. So I've got everything connected um, properly. And as you can see here, hopefully you can see that the red light is on, which means that the battery is low, which, which is accurate. This battery definitely needs to be charged. So that's connected. You do want to connect the battery first to the charge controller always. That's just 
standard practice no matter what charge controller you're working with. Uh, and it does say that in the directions, but I just want to reiterate that. Okay, so I'm having trouble with this system. It's not, the, uh, the light on the charge controller is not coming on for showing that it's, it's getting power from the solar panel. So I'm going to test the voltage of the, the wires coming from the solar panels. And I am getting over 20 volts open circuit. So that's what you would expect. So that's within spec. So something appears to be wrong with the charge controller. I'm going to double, triple check all the connections. Um, I do have the solar panels aimed directly at the sun over here. It's still fairly early in the morning, so I'm not expecting full production or anything, but they are aimed directly at the sun. There's no shading on the panels or anything like that that could be causing any problems. Okay, so it's working now, but the light is still not on. But I have tested the voltage at, at the terminals. There is 14 something volts coming in under load to the, the solar side. And there is 13 something volts going out under load from the battery side and into the battery, which is reading about 12.96 volts. So I do still think that we're having some significant voltage drop from these lines because I'm reading 13 plus volts at the battery terminals and only 12.96 at the battery. So not a huge, huge deal, but again, I would urge people to order some copper wire for this. Anyway, it is working. Um, I don't know what the deal is with the light. There, there's no light lit up on the solar side. Um, this function, if you push the power button, it turns on the load side if you want to power a load to an inverter or something. If you hold down the button for three to six seconds, it will activate a timer, which is what this uh, LCD digit is for, and it will allow you to set a time for your inverter to run. Uh, you know, if you wanted your inverter to run for three hours and then shut off automatically, you can use that. I don't know how useful that is. I've never seen that on a charge controller before but if that helps you, that may be a nice feature. Overall, there's some great parts of this kit. I really think these solar panels are top notch. I like that they come with MC4 connectors. They've got a nice watertight junction box behind them. They seem to be built sturdily. They do come with mounting hardware, which is nice. It comes with a charge controller and wires and everything that you need except a battery and except an inverter. Also to mention this pulse width modulation charge controller can only handle lead acid batteries. So if you want to use lithium or something else with this, it will not work. It is also not programmable. So if you want to fine tune your settings, you cannot do that. All in all though, for 270 bucks for a complete kit with everything that you need except a battery and an inverter, that's a great price. That puts the solar panels at about a little over a dollar per watt. By the way, that's a fully shipped price uh, with tax included actually. So really good deal, uh, good quality panels. I'm not in love with the charge controller, especially since the light didn't come on indicating that something's happening. If I didn't know how to use a voltmeter to test things, I wouldn't know that this, this system was working. I would give this probably three stars out of five. Thanks for watching guys. For more solar product reviews in the future, be sure to hit subscribe.